I'm digging behind the scenes. So this is my one, uh, not my 125, my 55 gallon stand I built. Now it's not done yet. It's got it needs some more support beams and stuff. Now you should have some support arms in the middle of these, but I've got two by fours nailed together, so that's holding it together. I'm gonna have some some going in the middle right here, like on top. I'm gonna have some going around the center and some more support to go up. That way this thing stays stable. And then we're going to put some wood around it to make it look like a cabinet. And we're going to put the tank on top. And then we're going to make a canopy for it. FishTankTV.com and YouTube got me six more 2x4s. And let's get this thing to work. All right, you can see I got two four by, I got six 2x4x8 salt treated wood. Going to put that on there. More support. And I uh, got some nails. Let's get it going. There we go. FishTankTV.com and YouTube. My 55 gallon stand. I'm 100% positive this thing can hold the 55 gallon. As you can tell, I put a lot into it, and I use nails that um, are are twisted, so it gets more grip. So it's almost like screws, but it's not as good as screws. But as you can see, this has very, 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 very much support. If you don't believe wood can support a lot, talk to Mike Vegas Surfer. He did a science project a while back, I think, with two picks or something, or chopsticks or something, and uh, he, I think, he held like 200 some pounds, something like that. I'm not sure, but. I might not put, I still, I might put, I might put uh, boards around it, like black boards just to hide it, all the inside, but I might leave it open because I like having my sump open, that way I can get to easy if there's ever a problem, I can just stick my hands down there and fix the problem, and no problem, problem solved. Now if I had um, boards on here and stuff and I had need to get something out, you know, it would be a pain in the butt. And that's also why I made this sump, this uh, stand so tall. It's uh, three, three foot tall, I think, something like that. Because I learned my lesson with my 125. I made a short stand because of the weight. And, you know, it's hard to get in there. So, you can see I also put these things in the back just for the heck of it to make it less flimsy. You can see it's pretty sturdy. Um, those boards down there to hold the 29 gallon sump. I hope I have them in the right location. But if I don't, big deal. Just move them. Um, unnail them and move them. And that's what's going on. There we have it. There we have it. The tank is looking small underneath. That's my 29 gallon Amazon tank. My old Amazon tank. Well, the first of all, it was a, my first, one of my first saltwater tanks. Then I turned into a Amazon tank once I once I turned my 55 into the saltwater tank. So if you want to see my Amazon tank, click right here and you'll see it. Um, so it's a little the stand's a little too big for my liking, but I'm not arguing with it because I know I've got that much more support and I don't have to worry about the tank collapsing. So 29 gallons underneath is going to be my sump. And you can see it's a little extra wide. It only really has to be this wide right here where these uh, two by fours come out right here. A lot of people are saying, wow, you really overkilled this stand. Well, you gotta think. This is gonna be my saltwater tank and this is gonna be my, my reef. So if I overkill it, oh well. It's not hurting me. So my 55 gallon stand, my 55 gallon aquarium is gonna go here and it's gonna drain down to the sump and I might put I might put seahorses down here because macroalgae is gonna be down here so seahorses love to stay in macroalgae anyways, that's where they live in the wild. Some live on reefs, but most of them live in the macroalgae valleys in the ocean. But guess what? That's the good thing about it. Come down here, talk about my 55 gallon, and maybe I want to talk about the 125 in the same video. Boosh. Come right over here and talk about the 125. All right, guys, very important. One thing, very important. Take a look at how I got my cords on the wall above the tank. This way, water cannot get up here. Okay, look, <clears throat> if my plugs were down here like most outlets, if a plug was down here, and let's say the 55-gallon had a leak and or some kind of leak that water got out, and then water tapered down this cord. Let's say, let's say this is your outlet, all right? Water's tapering down, water's tapering down, it goes in the outlet and <laughs> guess what? You got a fire or you're going to get some electricity problem, you might kill your fish, might burn the house down, might kill yourself. <clears throat> might not even know there's a problem until, hey, you go in your tank, you open the lid up, put your hand there, you electrocute it. I cannot stress this enough. Do not be lazy about this, guys. Either put drip loops in your tank or do what I'm doing. I'm putting my my outlets up here. That's what I'm liking. Also, look over here, my 125. My outlet is way, way above any water. This way, the plugs cannot get wet. So, uh, yeah. 
make sure, make sure you have, you can see this will just plug up to that and I'm going to fix the course up nice and neat. This way water cannot go into it. All the course in this 55 will go in here, way above, way above. That way, no electricity problems. That's what we got going on right now. The 55 gallon is up and running. I took the whole tank down and put it back together. That's why it's so cloudy right now. Um, the fish are pretty much hiding. The maroon clowns right here. The yellow tank came out a sec. Oh, there he is. Um, you can see he's getting pretty big. I mean, he's almost, he's about four inches now. Um, he's really growing rapidly. So maroon clowns right there. I have no idea what the Niger Trigger will Grama and two Oscillaris clowns and two blue green reef crumbs are at right now. They're just chilling. I threw the live rock in there for two reasons for shelter purposes for the fish so they won't get stressed out and second reason I can't see what I'm doing because it's all cloudy right now I have to wait till it settles down and clears back up so I can aquascape it also I've got the lights off the tank right now because I don't want to stress them out I don't want to put them in a new well their old tank but they don't really know it's their old tank yet um, they might know I don't know but they know something happened but I don't want to put them in that tank and then have the lights on it's going to stress them out even more I have not spray paint the sides black I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I might do this because my yellow tank it is getting stressed out because it's seen as reflection. Now, somebody commented me saying yellow tanks always have that white stress mark. Ye yellow tanks are my favorite fish, and I know a hell of a lot about yellow tanks. If you have a perfectly healthy yellow tank, they will not have that stress mark. Um, my yellow tank, my old one before Hurricane Irene, did not have that yellow stress mark. And I also had this back wall covered in coralline algae in that time. And... Um, it, you know, it wasn't seeing its reflection, and once I started peeling that core line off and I got my new tang, I noticed I could see the reflection of the fish on the, on the side panels. And I'm wondering, you know, if he kept seeing the yellow tang in his territory, he got pissed off and, you know, he just, it wasn't good and he kept getting stressed out. So I'm hoping that he can't see his reflection anymore and it'll solve that problem. You can see he's, he's staying on the side right now and that's probably a good sign that he can't see it because usually he's on, like, in the center just swimming around. But... Hopefully he won't see his reflection. If he still sees his reflection, we'll go ahead and put probably a uh, spray paint this thing or maybe a, a backdrop on the sides. I'm not sure if I want to permanently spray paint the, the sides. Now, you can scrape spray paint off, but it's just a pain. Um, you can use Windex. That's a real good tip. Um, my man, Marty, uh, what's his name? I'll put his name in the, YouTube, in the description in the uh, video right here. My man, Marty something, he uses Windex. and. Uh, works perfectly fine. Now, the sump's not even close to be done. And it's been a fish Friday, that's for sure. Um, you can see over here what we got going on is the 125 is looking better with every water change I do. And the reason for that is because the water, the tank has to establish itself. So, I mean, you can see the tannishing in this bucket, the tannings, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I said tannishing, and someone said, a lot of people made fun of me because the way I call it, well, I really don't care what it's called or how it's pronounced. I know what it does. I know why it's called. Tannis tannishing or tannings there we go tannings I think that's it but uh you can see the tannings in the yellow bucket right there and I'm probably going to bring out I took out water Monday or Tuesday I took out about 25 gallons I think I'm only going to take out 15 gallons this time replenish it okay you, and you want to do a lot of water changes because I mean your plants you got to think they're absorbing all those nutrients and stuff so if you leave your water stagnant it all depends on the kind of plants you got too. If you got Amazon swords, um, something easy like Amazon swords over here, over here, Java moss, something easy, um, wisteria, which is probably making a comeback. I have no idea why it died off. This is one of the easiest plants to grow. Um, indicas and stuff. You know, those plants can usually handle it, but if you got harder to care for plants like Kawagumnum, Rondifolia red, um, Macaranda and stuff like I got in here, you need to keep up with the water changes because you need to replenish those nutrients and macro and micro and trace elements that are getting depleted from your fish to your plants to your bacteria and etc etc so the video is getting long guys comment rate and subscribe stay with me later hey, I forgot one more thing guys I want to add to this video you see this pump right here I forgot this pump's name and what brand it is but um it's a really good pump it pumps out 1,800 gallons per hour so it's a lot of water flow on a 55 gallon and what I'm planning on doing is when I get that one 1,200 gallon or maybe 2,000 gallon pump. I don't know yet. Um, when I have it come back, I'm having DIY spray bars and it's going to really circulate the tank really good. What I'm thinking about doing is taking this pump off if I don't need it anymore, this skimmer or power head, whatever you want to call it, and uh, have it over here on the 125 because you can see I haven't shown this yet. My DIY spray bars right there, you can see the holes in it and stuff. I hope you can see it. 
Um, let me get a better look. Yeah, you can see the holes in there and stuff. And, you know, it's not getting enough water flow in this tank. And I'm just probably, hopefully I can put that pump, that skimmer or whatever you want to call it, power head in here. And it just circulates my water a little better. That way I get that much more water flow. What I want to do is put it down here maybe and aim it up. This way, for two reasons. This way gases escape better and I'll lose more CO2. That's what the problem though. And it'll push stuff up to my overflows. And that way I'm making sure I get that much more efficient filtration. Now it's time to aquascape this thing and get back at you guys. Later.